Frank, you made it this year. I did. And uh, well, well, it was the usual Tom's notes. Right? <laughs> There's four of us here to review all crop management. I'm Tom Pierbolt, for those of you who don't know. Jason's over here handling the the pretty much the presentations and stuff, and also video. We, this is the first thing for us is starting to record some of these things. So if any of you feel uncomfortable or speakers don't want to be recorded, just let us know. Um, lots of handouts in the back. Three pesticide credits, and we'll hand out the sheets uh, during the last presentation. So with that, our first presentations are on the uh, machine harvester developments. Frank, you want to go first? Sure. Take about 15 minutes or so, and then Don Carter from uh, Oxbow. And then we'll have about 20 minutes or so, hopefully, for some questions and discussion. Yeah, as most of you know, I'm from Little Town Harvester. Uh, we have uh, been building berry harvesters since 1962. Uh, you know, the continuing innovation coming from all the uh, questions that are raised by the operators of them. Um, always kind of inter always kind of breaks us into the new ground of what we're trying right now. Uh, some of the new new products for us are the orchard apple processor, which could also be other types of process. Uh, one of the things on this machine uh, that, that's kind of unique is it's still a hand-picked uh, product. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, it's going to be picked and placed on the conveyor system. Uh, it goes across the roll grading type system where it's sorted, discharged in the field. And this is uh, unique in the fact that it's not taken to the processor to be unloaded sorted and uh, reboxed. So, just wanted to touch base on that. <clears throat> I don't think this area's got much to do with, with the apples at this point. Uh, the mulch spreaders, uh, that's been one of the hottest things uh, going around here lately. Uh, just from the crop management, trying to get proper organic nutrient material on the beds. And some of this stuff is uh, real expensive, so trying to manage that in sometimes as little as uh, one to two tons per acre has been a challenge. We're, we're working with a lot of great uh, vineyards at the moment, and uh, of course all the berry farmers. Uh, so as we, uh, you know, continue to develop and find new ways to really control the, the uh, feeds on the machine itself. We've uh, now opted for an option to have electronic uh, in-cap controls uh, so that you can really finally monitor it. However, it seems mostly that once you figure out your application rate by sampling a few rows, doing the math, picking the speed and the conveyor uh, RPM, then it's pretty easy to go in and put the processes on. <clears throat> we, we have uh, three lines of spreaders, and as we get into this, we'll kind of see each of those too. The, the next item is the side row berry harvester, and this is our main line for red raspberries, and also for the uh, Marion berries, blackberries, poisons. And it's the most economical method to get into those crops, uh, just because it is a simpler machine. <coughs> Excuse me, a little tickle in my throat. And uh, as, as we uh, move up in the, in the machine list, the over-the-row models, and there's basically two over-the-row models, the standard as we know it, and then this uh, new XL. Uh, this year we're actually building both the over-the-row and the ORXL models. The over-the-row has two more drops, 
but it is a easier to maneuver from field to field as it's not required to go on low boy. And so that has been a, a request by customers. So it's back in production this year. The Orchard processor was new in 13. We have two seasons under our belt with it. Uh, we've gone in and we removed the whole center section of that. And, and it's pretty easy to remove it. I think uh, Kyle and Norm went out and did four machines, removed all the conveyors, put all the <coughs> platforms on it, uh, put a pneumatic uh, air compressor with hand uh, operated pneumatic shears and then they go through it and prune. Then later they'll go back and they'll butt thin with it, and then later they'll come back and we'll put all the conveyors on it and go back into harvest. The uh, side row machine, of course seen here, classically got its name because you operate and do all the work beside the row, unlike the old row harvester where it's above. Now we've uh, done a lot, you know, with that machine we've We've gone up, people wanted more capacity, like the 05 models have the bigger cups and stuff in them, have the bigger engine. And ultimately, the overall cost of operating the big engine was uh, offset by the fact that, like in raspberries, you have to go through so many harvest sequences, uh, usually about every other day, and so therefore, you know, your, your fuel cost was uh, a big factor. So we're back to the little Kubota uh, 2203 engine, and it's very economical to operate, and it does everything we need it to do. Uh, once again, just a visual on the apples. Uh, on the right, you can see the, uh, the trees are more of a head shape in this application. We also have a... Uh, uh, a straight hedge in this application. We also are experiencing another hedge that is a V trellis. And uh, so we have two different kinds of uh, conveyor setups and deck setups for each of those. Uh, we, we go through and uh, we run the apples through, roll grade them, but they actually roll around so you can see all sides, sort them, discharge them right in the field, and end up with a beautiful box of apples. It's ready to go right into cold storage. And, you know, the classic uh, one bad apple ruins the whole box. Hopefully, if we did our job, that's not in there. And uh, this is showing them tethered off to the, to the safety rail so they can lean out. And, Ultimately, this process is saving between $60 and $150 per box. There's an expense of uh, going to the plant, coming back from the plant with, with the discard apples. Uh, at this point, they're discarded in the field. No, no need to handle the box again. So it's been a great cost savings. And then this one's kind of the bread and butter of blueberries right here. Uh, the XL model's been working working out quite well. In 2013, we uh, did a little bit of work with the uh, elevator platform, uh, enlarging the cylinder and moving it over to the right-hand side, because that seems to be the side most of the fruit constantly is stacked from right to left. And then, uh, of course, this, this machine has four pallets of uh, uh, full space, and we can pretty reliably lift and maneuver 6,000 pound loads. <laughs> uh, seemed, seemed like this last uh, season or two, uh, we had some, uh, especially some new crops uh, that were kind of like the one pick wonder, uh, and uh, of course we got to some fields where we were overloading the deck and uh, unloading it with forklifts right from its full position. But there was times we were seeing seven to 8,000 pound loads just to get into the rows, which is usually a good problem if you can have that. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, three and a half inch catcher design, uh, all, all formed 
edges are down. It uh, gives it a real nice wiper effect. It also separates uh, the, the plate material of the catcher and helps break viscosity, especially in stickier conditions, wet weather, all that sort of stuff. Um, the, other, the other thing about probably better with the three and a half inch catcher than our double two and a half inch catcher. I think we kind of got a little overzealous when we designed that, and I have to take credit for a bit of that myself. But but uh, one of the things with the longer and shorter plates that work great for catching fruit, and we still have people that love it, but but it does have a tendency to sometimes roll the, the gap in the plates will will roll up on a berry and make a little little mark on it. It does cause some bruising for the fresh side. So when you're shooting for the fresh market, which all, a lot of us are shooting for now, uh, you know, the three and a half inch catcher has been our best uh, application so far. The machine is two feet longer than an over the row. And you'll notice there's no catchers right back here. But also, the catchers are two feet farther in front of the heads. So the biggest loss that we were seeing in the fruit was actually coming out of the front of the machine. And uh, you know, some of the guys have been trying to air assist in different areas to try to keep berries, you know, from, from falling through right underneath the heads and or off the front. And watching some of that video was some of the reasons why we lengthened this machine. We tried to keep the wheelbase as close to the same as we could. So the wheelbase didn't quite grow the whole two feet, uh, which does keep our turning capabilities uh, quite nice in the field. And since the catcher stop two feet inside, you can actually start turning while the back wheels are still in the row. And uh, so it really doesn't require uh, probably more than a foot more head lens than, a, than an over the row. So if you can get by with the, probably even some 18 foot head lens you pull up, do a backup, and then go in. But uh, you know, 20, 24 inch foot headlands are awesome. About five minutes, Frank. Okay. Uh, as we're going through looking at the fruit, uh, one thing XL does is it delivers the fruit directly onto the main belt. And you'll see there's two lower fans back here. There's two upper fans. The fruit on the right is brought up, delivered on to the right side. It has a four, four and a half foot inspection area. Then the fruit on the left side is added to it, and then it goes out and has about another three foot inspection area. So it does give us a lot of opportunity to A, run the fans, and the fans will raise the berries up in an air chamber where they actually float, and that's what levels them out. And then, if a berry is overripe or underripe, they'll also be underweight. And so we can use the fans to help the sort out. And so there's often times on the machine when there's, you know, like this was a duke crop, it picks real clean. There's very little work to do. So basically the, the hand workers are looking for, you know, red berries such as these, green berries such as those. That's what they're trying to sort out. Now, th this particular photo was over at Brayman Farms, and uh, they were they were running berries, and they were doing a fresh pack on this, and they were running at about a three percent sort out. So it was awesome conditions, rare conditions, but they were awesome. Had a great a great uh, uh, yield on that, and uh, you know great quality. <coughs> And you know, back to the side row. This is uh, showing some raspberries. Uh, the side row, as you can see, it only, oops, it only holds uh, about one pallet of fools up here and about one pallet here. So it's about a two pallet machine. And it's, uh, you know, kind of got the driver isolated up here and your inspection belt workers are back in the midsection and your crate filler and stacker is kind of a one guy deal. But this machine, you're typically filling crates in the, uh, you know, 25, 30 second range uh, at best. Oftentimes, it's like a 45 second thing, and so it's it's pretty easy to stack. The over the row, 
a lot of times we're filling tubs and crates in the you know seven to ten second range and so it takes a, a lot of staff usually six people to, to operate that machine versus this one can usually be operated pretty comfortably with four maybe three and then as you can see here with the with the spreaders <clears throat> the ss20 being the biggest and you know this thing's uh you know 25 feet long it's not easy to get in and out of uh, established row with a short headline. It's basically for new plantings, put down a lot of product. <clears throat> the cross conveyors in both models can be removed to do a center drop. Uh, of course, the SS8 is our most popular. And uh, this is actually a photo of our last year's design. The new one, the tongue Z's up over the top of the conveyor, and the conveyor will now pivot from side to side to, to help us uh, get a little better application in some of the raised beds. And last but not least, the SC30 uh, cleaners, which are usually used in plant uh, to, to deliver the belt, berries, clean them one more time, and deliver them onto the inspection belt. And then our little uh, kind of customized uh, sprayers for spraying crowns and uh, kind of cleaning up some of the weeds and uh, foliage there. And uh, once again, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you and I'm sure it will be a lot of a question and answer opportunity.